Hello everyone and welcome back to another Raiders video. In this video, I'll be giving my final 7 round mock draft for the Raiders 3.0. So let's get into it. So firstly, I have a trade. But it's actually going to be a trade down instead of a trade up. Because I just don't see that being the case. Daniels and May seem to be going 2 and 3, whatever order it is. I mean, maybe there's a trade from McCarthy in there, but I don't think we should do that personally. So here's what I was doing. We are trading back with the Eagles at 22nd overall. The Eagles are a team that we know needs a cornerback and have been tied to maybe doing some trade-ups. Of course, you know, Howie Roseman is aggressive enough to do that, so it does you know, fit the mold. But let's say they trade up for Terion Arnold or maybe Quayon Mitchell, whoever their guy is, at 13. They take that you know, player, and we get 22nd at 53rd overall. Now, the Eagles also have two second-round picks. So it makes them more willing to do this. We also gave up 148 um, just to make the uh, trade a little bit more fair. So at 22nd, I'm taking Michael Penix. This seems like a good situation. Not going to be there in the second round. And, you know, getting him at 22nd with more value is better than 13th overall. So I like this direction. Penix can maybe be a day one starter, but I can't confirm it right away. You know, we do have some guys that can be with him right away as well. You know, and, and two guys that have at least been around, of course, Minshew a lot more than O'Connell, but, you know, Penix can make all the throws. You know, he does have the athleticism and just doesn't really opt to use it, which kind of makes sense given his injury history, but, you know, he's a guy who comes in, you know, good size, uh, good leadership, and, you know, could start right away. Could be that franchise guy, which it's the first round. The bust rate's pretty high, but you got to find that quarterback. So now 44th overall, which is our second round pick. I was taking Patrick Paul, who is, I believe, a left tackle out of Houston. You know, he's been pretty much in this draft projection range the whole mock draft cycle. Now, we're going to move him to right tackle because that's where we're going to need him, obviously, not a left tackle. So, staying at tackle but transitioning. He has the size. He's 6'7". And he put up a pretty good RES score. You know, I haven't, wa I haven't watched his tape or anything, but he seems like a good athlete with those numbers. And we're going to move him over to right tackle. Then at 53rd overall, which is the pick we got from the Philadelphia Eagles, we're going to take Kamari Lassiter, cornerback out of Georgia. This is a player I kind of like here. You know, he's he's a physical corner that isn't, let's say, you know, like 40 speed fast, but he but he's, you know, hip work, full, full work type of fast. He's an agile type of player, which is something I like. You know, for a corner, you don't have to be the fastest as long as you can change the direction and, you know, flip your hips. That's the type of player, player he is. He can tackle well. I believe he gave up like 15 catches the entire year. More last year is a guy I really like out of Georgia. This would be a good draft pick, in my opinion. Then in the third round, at 77th overall, I was taking Brandon Coleman out of TCU, who is a guard. Now, he's kind of played both sides of the um, offensive line uh, in the past, but we're going to need him at right guard. So we just got our right tackle of the future and a right guard of the future. So Brandon Coleman is, you know, he has prototypical size. Of course, as I mentioned, versatile, and he's a pretty good athlete. And he put up a lot of good reps at the senior bowl as well. This is a player that pretty much we want starting day one at right guard. You know, not a big fan of Cody Whitehair right now in his career. In the past, he was a very good player, but not really right now. Especially with Whitehair, he's experiencing more on the left side. You know, left guard and center. So, I think Brandon Coleman can come in, be the right guard day one. Cody Whitehair can, can kind of be the swing guard if we need him to. And, and Dylan Parham can stay starting at left guard. Now, pick 112 in the fourth round. I was taking Isaac Arendo, running back at a Louisville. This might seem like a little bit of a reach, but he has a lot of positives to go on. First of all, he was kind of the bat... Um, not backup, but kind of 1B at Louisville behind Jawar Jordan, who's also in the draft class, but he's not going to go as high as Garendo, it seems. You know, it seems like Garendo was just a better, you know, like, prospect, like, you know, better speed, uh, size, that type of stuff. And Garendo had a really nice uh, combine, and it looks like he's going to go higher. I'm going to take him here at 112. I'll say, like, Jalen Wright was available, but I just don't think he'll be available in real life. So I wanted a running back here, and, you know, this is the guy I wanted at this spot, 112. Now, we don't pick for a while because we traded that 148 overall pick to the Eagles in, you know, that first round trade. But here at 208, yeah, a long time later, I'm going to take Trey Taylor, a safety at Air Force. Not sure if he'll be here in real life, but he is a, he's a pretty solid player at Air Force. Of course, smaller school. Um, well known, but I'm saying the level of competition is not as good at Air, at Air Force. But um, he has a size. I believe he's related to Ed Reed, which I found out like literally today. Kind of interesting, but... You know, Trey Taylor would be a solid addition. I just want some depth at the safety position. Not looking for a starter right now. I still like Chris Smith, who we drafted last year, but you know, Mark Sepp, Trey Merrick, both free agents at the end of the year. So, I'd like to get some depth behind them. Finally, I did actually make a trade up. Not sure how realistic it is, but 
she wanted to throw in a late round trade up it's just an experiment so i'm trading our final two picks 223 and 229 for a pick 211 with the niners to take anthony gold a receiver from oregon state i've seen him play before he's more of a return specialist guy and slot receiver kind of needs more speed on offense Trey Tucker's like the only fast receiver we kind of have and not sure our return guy is going to be because you know deandre carter was our kick and power returner last year but he is still a free agent and not resigned so maybe gold can be that guy going forward Anyway, that's my final seven round mock draft before the real draft. I'm gonna make obviously videos about the draft, about who we actually do draft when the time comes. Excited, also worried, but you know that happens. But anyway, I'm Arto, and thank you for watching.